One thing I've noticed about working in North Kakalaki, a lot of white trucks. Every truck I'm working on is white. White. Let's not forget about the one outside. So today is like throwback Monday. We got three six liters in here. And one of them's running, making all that racket. So let's look at it first. It's a 06 with almost exactly a quarter million miles on it. So they cannot get it started when it's cold. It takes forever to crank it up. So they left it running. So let's uh, check it out. Six liter number three. One thing you gotta be careful of when you're using IDS is the VCM2 is gonna be aggravating. We don't have any communication. It says it's a problem with the VCM2. Um, well, we got power. Okay. Normally, when you plug it into the vehicle, you'll get a power. We're not plugging in a vehicle when we're showing power. We're getting power from a laptop. So if we unplug the laptop, we lose our power. We plug it back into the car, we don't have any power. So we're missing power on a, our data link connector here, which is misleading because when I plug it into the laptop, everything powers up. That really shouldn't be powered up when there's no power on the vehicle. So let's check the fuse. It's sitting on the seat here. So that one is blown. Really blown. All right, let me grab a fuse. I just happen to have some spare fuses laying around here. back in there and we'll see if uh so we get power on our our doodad and we're powering up so now we have power this in here. Ford had the bright idea to hook the data link connector in line with the fuse for the cigar lighter. I've been doing that for about 30 years. So it's still a good idea in their eyes. So we'll let this thing get linked up. Put these panels back on. Huh? Train 
game pan? Yeah. I ain't the one up there. I'm thinking about, I'm gonna get a nice train pan because I don't want to land that shit when I got to put it back together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, grab, grab that, that thing might work right. Grab that blue thing. Uh, Alright, we got some communication. Let's see what we got here. Didn't click happy. Uh, this complaint was um, runs runs poorly. Checking the light on. I don't remember. Those things aren't important. Let's see what we got for mileage here. 184,000. Cylinder number five. Five. And we actually got injector codes on this one. Balance five. Glow plug one. So let's do a buzz test. Like we'll be able to hear it. Got a fan going over there. You guys go over here. Finished up one white truck and another white truck showed up. So on to six liter number three. Um, number five injector didn't buzz, and we want to make sure we're getting a signal to it before we condemn that injector. Um, yeah, we can get in there with the ohm meter and check the, the ohmage and all that stuff. So we're just going to use a Noid light a little test rig I've got here. And we are going to check, it doesn't take a lot of energy to move the coil in those injectors. So we are going to 
redo the buzz test and see if it'll light a noise light. There's number five injector connector down there. I'll disconnect it. Put this little tester in there. So that's our harness. We gotta find our uh, alignment tab, which is opposite of the clip, which will go into right there, which is opposite of the writing. So we'll clip that in place. We got our two leads. We'll do our bus test. I need to make a more permanent rig, but I don't work on these six liters too much anymore, so I haven't got around to it. This is kind of hokey. Alright, so that coil buzzed. And that coil buzzed. So that's on this. That's good enough. Uh, we've got control. We've got signal. Um, it's injector time. Now it's a hundred percent def. It's a hundred percent definite on the injector. You don't have to worry about the engine or anything like that because we actually have an injector circuit code. Because I mean it won't buzz. So I mean we can go one step further and check the resistance of the injector. But we don't need to. And that's really all the guy was playing by. He wants an oil change. He said it was running rough. And that'll take care of that. But we did have a glow plug code. So we'll check that real quick. And we're going to let him know about this cooling system issue. And we're going to get the injector in it and drive it and see what the actual pressure is. Um, just have it noted like on the RO in case he declines to do anything with it. Or says, you know, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. Um, see if it gets any worse that kind of thing you know he may trade a truck who knows got the approval to do this injector uh, number five on this uh, six liter number three I've got footage of doing it six liter injectors already so I wasn't gonna do anything with it like I did the other one but um, I work pretty slow and they want this truck today, and it is a quarter till 12. I'm still going to do an oil change on it and drive it to see what the uh, cooling system pressure is. So in an effort to make me speed up, I figured, you know what, I think we'll do a time lapse of this truck. So I've got a little timer I can put down in the bottom of the screen. Somewhere in one of these bottoms of the screen. I think of this one. It's an hour. So if I time last that times 10, that's six minutes. I'll do that another 10, that, that's like a three minute section of video. Um, so I think that's what we're gonna do. But first, I'm gonna get the tires off of this thing so I can reach it. It's kinda, sits up kinda high, I can't reach it. So I'll pop the tires off the old girl and get, get it to where I can reach it, put the fender cover on it. And then we'll fire up the old timer in the time lapse and see where we're at in one hour. And 
these are the part. Oh, it's the same as the other one I did. So we got a late model six liter injector. It's going in the number five hole. They level up for you from the factory. It's not bad. And I've got a new dummy plug and stand pipe if needed. May not need them. If they're already updated and their rings are good, we we'll won't use them. If they aren't, we will use them. And then we got a oil filter and some really shitty blade cleaner. The 
So it's roughly 10 after 2 and we're done done with the injector with uh, minor interruptions. Now I'm going to throw the tires back on it uh, which is a lot of fun because those things are heavy. Uh, it needs an oil change and I really hate to do it on the ground. But, you know, I'd like to do it over here on this lift. But it's going to take forever to get this thing started. And then once I do get it started, I mean, to drive it back over here and shut it off, it's going to take forever to get it started again. So I think I'm just going to do it here on the ground. So I'll pop the oil filter out, drain the oil, fill that back up, and um, I'm going to top this off. Once we get it running, let it run for a little bit. 
to check our pressure. Now you may be curious about the glow plug. You know, whatever became of that. I did check it. We checked it off camera. And it was working. So I'm not going to bother with it. You know. If it comes up again, we'll look at it again. But it may have been a fluke. Who knows? So we'll continue on. Six liter number three. Six liter number three. I think it was number three. I got confused. Three in a row. I forgot what I was calling them. Uh, anyway, injector number five took care of that. That that thing ran bad all the time. That injector was definitely uh, crapped out. Um, we got the injector in it. What else had to do that thing? We did the oil change. We put the injector in it. And then I didn't have time to film. Uh, that all happened in one day. The guy... Uh, he needed his truck and you know, he didn't care if it cost extra he just had to have his truck so we did I mean every bit of that happened to, you know in one day um, so I put the pressure gauge on the cooling system and I went and drove it and that truck made more pressure than any truck I've driven since I've been here in North Carolina, which is about four and a half years. Maybe five years. I'm getting, I don't know. My days all run together. But I made 20 pounds of pressure in the cooling system. The cap is set for 16. And uh, I got about 28 pounds of boost out of the turbo. So when I came back to the shop, it was antifreeze everywhere. It just blew it right out of the cap, all over the master cylinder, and you know everywhere else. So the customer was made aware of this. Hey, look, you know, got problems. And he said, "It's okay." He said he, he's going to drive it. So he's just going to add antifreeze to it and drive it a little bit easier. If you drive it easy, you don't you know romp on it everywhere you go. You, you can still drive them in that condition, but to the board it's going to push antifreeze out every time until it's fixed and in that case it's going to need head gaskets and I'd recommend studs I mean it's had good success with them so he picked up was happy and uh, he's back on the road